fellowship with each other. Thank you, Father, that as we study your Praise word, it. thank you for revelation knowledge flowing freely, unhindered, yes. uninterrupted by any satanic or honest spirit. Thank you, Father God, that we decrease and you increase, all of you and none of us. Thank you that you've anointed our ears to hear our spirit to receive and contain your word. And thank you, Father, that as we study your word, our minds are being renewed so that our lives will be changed. Yes. Thank you for influencing my thinking and speaking so that I will say all that you have me to say. And Father, we will always give you the praise and always give you the Yes, thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name. And everyone in agreement say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We go, we're still teaching on godly leaders, a godly leader, but we're going to the second teaching in this series, which is biblical qualification for leadership position. In this leadership teaching, we're going to talk about the requirements for holding a position or office in a ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, there are biblical requirements yeah. mm -hmm. for a person holding an office in the ministry. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, the principles that we're going to study from the Word of God does apply to our everyday life. However, we're focusing on leadership positions or offices held in a ministry. Amen. People take it lightly when they... Uh, receive a position in the ministry. A lot of people take it, I mean, receive the position with wrong motives. A lot of them want, a lot of people receive, or many receive because they want that notoriety or that uh, publicity. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they want authority so that people look up to them. Mm -hmm. But that's the wrong reason. You know, the purpose of, of leadership is to serve the people. That's right. The purpose of leadership is to help the people, help them live the way God has called them to live. Yeah. The term leadership is defined as the office, position, or capacity of a leader. The term leadership is defined as the office, the position, or capacity of a leader. Mm -hmm. Qualification is defined as any ability, training, attribute, or accomplishment that fits a person for a specific office, role, position, or profession. I'm, all believers qualify for what I'm talking, what or, or what we're teaching. But what most people, a lot of believers, don't understand, our lifestyle carries over into our job. Amen. You understand? <clears throat> in the church, you also have to carry the, the, the same attributes, the same character on your job. Because people are watching, watching. Mm -hmm. even if you don't have a leadership position on the job, you still have to carry and conduct yourself the way the Bible tells us to. Amen? Amen. Now, from the Word of God, we're going to examine what types of abilities, training, attributes, or accomplishments are required for a leadership position or office in a ministry. Now Paul, during his journeys, appointed leaders in various churches. The leaders chosen were to lead the churches by teaching sound doctrine. That's the word of God. All right? They was uh, chosen by, uh, for the purpose of helping believers to mature spiritually. Now, if the leader is not mature, it's difficult for them to teach others to mature. Right. Meaning that if their behavior is not mature, then they're not going to be able to teach others to mature either. Okay? So we have to make sure, as a leader, we have to set the example. We have to go first. All right? They also were chosen to uh, equip the people to live for Jesus despite opposition. Because when you get people coming in, you know the devil is going to go at them. Oh, the bar got the light on out there. Praise Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I, had to, I had to throw that one in the message. <laughs> that happened then. <laughs> that was a free one there. Yeah. Way to go, Brother Bob. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have to make sure that our lifestyle shows people how to serve God even when the opposition comes because when new believers come, the enemy is going to attack them. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, and, and Matthew, it did 
didn't just say make converts. Jesus didn't say make converts. He said make disciples. That means that we're to teach people to follow the word of God. All right? Are y'all still with me? Now, in choosing leaders, Paul described a few qualifications. And we go into Titus chapter 1. And this will be our foundational scripture for this teaching. Titus chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. Titus chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. And when you get there, say amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Titus chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, uh, we're going to read verses 5 through 9, and I pull 15 qualifications or requirements out of those verses. Praise the Lord. And, and understand this, we don't work on them one at a time. Right. We work on them all together. When you see a place where there's a uh, uh, a hole in the armor, mm -hmm. close that hole. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if you see where you're not uh, applying that principle to your life, you need to do it. Because if you try to do it one at a time, you'll never get there. Okay? And we have the ability through God to do it all at one time. Titus chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. If you have it, say, I have it. Yeah, I have it. All right. Paul said, for this reason, now, now he's given the reason why he's telling Titus to choose leaders, okay? He said, for this reason I left you in Crete that you should set in order the things that are liking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. Now, I love that verse because Paul said the reason why you need leaders is to set things in order. You know, God likes things done decently and in order. And leaders are to do that. In a ministry, leaders are to make sure that things are in order. When the pastor is preaching, it's our job as leaders to make sure that there's no disturbances. It's our job to make sure that everything is ran completely. You know, we need to get here early and check the equipment. And, I mean, just things like Andrew do that a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's things that, that, that we have to do to make sure that, that, that the ministry goes like it's supposed to. He said, I, 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 I want you to appoint leaders so that you can set things in order. A lot of times, that means that you may have to go to a person and find out why they're disturbing the service. But you do it in a way not to put the person down, but walk them outside or walk them in the next room and find out why they're doing what they're doing. You know, <laughs> and find out why they're doing what they're doing. Your position as a leader, you, you, that, 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 that leadership position is, is in place for a reason. We're not just here to exercise authority. We're here to make things in you know, order. Even when Jesus fed the multitude, first thing he told them to do is what? Sit down. He, what, what, what he established was order. We have to have order. Okay? So in verse 5, Titus chapter 1, verse 5, Paul said, for this reason I left you in Crete that you should set in order the things that are like him and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. Then he goes on and gives the requirement for leadership. Verse 6, he said, if a man is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of dissipation or insubordination, for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-will, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not, not violent, nor greedy for money, but hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober-minded, just, holy, self-controlled, holding fast the word as he has been taught that he may be able to, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and convict those who contradict. Now, I like this last one because he says that you have to hold fast the word of God. Mm -hmm. A leader needs to know the word of God. Even if you don't teach the word of God, you still need to know the word That's of right. God so you can set an example in your life. Amen? Amen. Now, we're going to, like I said, I pulled 15 
qualifications out of those verses. All right, and we're going to go over each and every one. Not tonight, but we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> the first one that we're going to talk about is leaders are to be blameless. That's in verse 6. Now, being blameless does not refer to having reached sinless perfection where we never make a mistake or miss the mark. That ain't what he's talking about, but we all make mistakes, okay? Right. Instead, being blameless refers to having a personal life that is beyond accusation or public scandal. We shouldn't be living a priceless, sinful lifestyle. When in the, in the community, especially in the unsaved community, your lifestyle should stand out as being holy. That's what he's talking about. And he's saying living a lifestyle where people can't walk up to you and say, well, dog, no, they steal, they lie. Yeah. I mean, practice now. I mean, we miss, all of us miss the mark at times. Yeah. That ain't what he's talking about. He's talking about a lifestyle. Boy, you know? yeah. they do drugs, they drink, you know. These are, these, now these are the, these, this is what the people are saying. Now these folks would be God, godly people and they living like we are. Some of them living worse than we are. Well, he's saying your lifestyle shouldn't be like that. Because when you live in a community like that, uh, of, of unsaved people, and let's say they come to church, and they see you in leadership position, but they know how you live in the world, well, that's not a good witness. Nope. First thing, they're going to say, well, what kind of pastor this is? They're going to start blaming Brother Chuck. Put in the, got, got these people in leadership positions, but they live like us in the world. See, we have to be set apart. We have to be different. Hallelujah. Amen. As disciples of Christ and children of God, our lives should be characterized by moral purity. That means no stealing, lying, no fornication. It should be we uh, uh, we should have patience and, and and be at peace. We should have peacefulness, so that we will be lights in a dark and depraved world. Yeah. We have to be a, a leader, not just in church, but at home and on the job. Mm -hmm. And you have to be a light, all right? Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, I want to read from the Living Bible. It says, in everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Amen. I see so many believers complaining. They're complaining about the situation. All they do is talk about how bad it is. Complaining about the situation. Compl I don't know if I'm going to have enough money. I don't know if, if God wants me to. I, don't, I mean, just complaining about everything. Listen, when you complain, complaining is evidence of you not trusting God. Because when you complain, you're complaining against what he did, has done for you. So we need to set things up. We need to stop complaining. Amen. Stop Stop worrying. I mean, yes, you got some things going on, but you're not the only one. Everybody got stuff going on. Okay? Yeah. But stop complaining yeah. about it. And, and I'm telling you, you get people to the point where they don't even want to be around you no more because all you're going to do is complain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Well, as a leader, we got to set the example. We can't be complaining and then telling the people not to complain. Amen. Stop talking about the negative situation. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a testimony in it. You give your testimony. That's different. But I found out, too, that a lot of times complaining is disguised in the testimony. It's hidden in the testimony. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're using the testimony as, a, as an avenue to complain. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. yeah. But, and you're right, Brother Bob. Oh, poor me. Yeah, me. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, Brother Bob got a new car, but I don't have one. Yeah. You know, I mean, just, 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 just complain it. Stop complaining. Be thankful what you have. You need to learn. George Meyer said this a long time ago. You need to learn how to be satisfied where you are until you get to where God wants you to get. There you go. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you're not complaining, you know? Stop complaining so much. Verse 14, it says, And everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. You've got to stop arguing. Verse 15, so that no one can speak a word of blame against you. That's why you stop doing it, because you don't want the community of the unbelievers speaking a word against you. Yeah. All right? You are to live clean 
innocent lives as children of God in a dark world full of people who are crooked and stubborn. That's the unsaved world. It says, shine out among them like beacon lights. We're to shine, we're, we're, we're to be a light in a crooked society. Well, if you complaining, if you living like they live, and if you drinking, smoking, stealing, committing fornication, lying, sure. how you gonna stand out? I'm still doing that. You done, you, you are now like a chameleon. You done blend it right in with them. Oh, yeah. We have to be different. All right? And, and, and Paul said to be a leader in a position in a ministry, this is one of the qualifications that you have to have. Where, you, where, where you're living a life that's not blameless. Yeah. Amen. Now, Amen. you will have people that will lie on you. That's different. Okay? But eventually, your lifestyle will prove them wrong. That's what yeah. Peter talked about, too. Peter said that you're to live a life that even when they blame you, they have to end up giving God the glory because your lifestyle caused them to be yeah. wrong. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? We have to understand that a transformed life is an effective witness to the power of God's word. So even though we were once living like that, now that we're saved, we need to show them a transformed life. And that's a better witness than you telling them about Jesus. Because we can tell people anything. We can tell them we love them. We can tell them that we care about them, different things like this. But the evidence, of uh, Cassandra did a teaching on this, uh, uh, a play on this a while back. The proof is in the play. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You living it, you doing it is better uh, witness is a better witness than you telling them about it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. All right. So we need to make sure that we live in a blameless life. We are to live a life that cannot be criticized because of practice sin. That's the kind of life. That's what he's talking about when he says uh, leader ought to be blameless. It don't mean that you won't make a mistake. It don't mean that you won't miss the mark. You know, the Greek word for sin, singular, it means to miss the mark. It, it gives you the idea of a person shooting an arrow at a target. When you shoot an arrow at a target and miss, what you do? You reload and shoot again. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what it means. See, you may miss the mark, but then you say, oh, man, I missed it. So then you get right back on the right track and do it correctly. So the first one is leaders are not to be, leaders are to be blameless, I'm sorry. The second one that we got is still in verse 6. It says leaders are to have only one spouse. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it's been a lot of controversy over this, okay? <laughs> Paul said that a man is to be the husband of one wife. This is not an issue concerning divorce but rather that of internal and external purity concerning sex. What he's talking about is a, 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 you are to have one, um, a, the man is to have one wife, the, uh, and the wife is to have one husband. It doesn't mean that, okay, you've been divorced, now you can't marry again. And that's what a lot of people believe. They think because the pastor got divorced, he can't marry no more. The Bible says you only have one wife. Yeah, one at a time. <laughs> that's what that's talking about. It's not, it's, 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 it's not referring to you getting a divorce and now you can't marry. No, no. It's talking about having more than one wife. Right. Okay? <laughs> the phrase husband of one wife literally means a one woman man. All right now. That's what the phrase is. One woman man. My, my mic's <laughs> That one don't want me to preach this. I got the red one. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He loses again. There's yeah. only one, one way to skin a cat in. Yeah. Some people say, why do you want to skin the full cat? <laughs> so the husband of one wife literally means a one woman man. All right? This phrase is actually referring to a husband who is faithful to his wife. Now, I need to say this, too. These are requirements for leadership, and it's talking about a spouse, you know, the husbands that have only one spouse. But a single person is not disqualified because they are single. They can hold a leadership position in the ministry as well. However, single people are not to participate in sexual activity outside of the marriage either. 
If you're single, you still can't be out there committing fornication because you're a leader. Mm -hmm. All right, when people come into church and say, oh, I know him, oh, I know her, they sleep around. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's not a good witness. Mm -hmm. Those of us who are married, we are to be consistently both inwardly and outward, outwardly devoted and faithful to our spouse. You know what that means? You have to watch your thoughts. Yes, sir. You have to watch your thoughts. You can't, you know, the enemy will put stuff in front of you, mm -hmm. and you have to learn how to get rid of that. Don't meditate on it. Yes, sir. If you find yourself meditating <laughs> on it, get, go somewhere. Because as you meditate on it, it's going to get in your spirit, in your heart, mm -hmm. and, and out of the heart is going to come your action. They say out the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak, but that also includes action. Yeah. Now, under the law, we're under grace, but under the law, Jesus said if a man looked after a woman with a with, with sexual desire, he sinned. Yeah. Right. But yeah. see, what happens is when you meditate like that, it turns into an action. That's what yeah. James talks yeah. about. Yeah. James in chapter 1 talks about how sin begins with a thought. That's right. And then it it, it snowballs, it gets bigger and bigger, and then you act on it. So we have to be, you, you have to guard your thinking. Mm -hmm. Paul said in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, he says, Casting down all imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive yeah. to the obedience of Christ, or we can say to the obedience of the word of God. Yeah. See, we have to make sure that our thoughts are in line with the word. Now, you're going to have crazy thoughts in there. But, once again, my thing is, your thoughts are, are influenced by what you pay attention to. If you, if you spend more time watching secular things, then you're going to have secular thoughts. You understand that? If you, if you spend more time in the word, then you're going to have thoughts based in line with the word of God. If you, if, 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 if you watch a lot of scary stuff, yep. you're going to have thoughts of fear. Right? Mm -hmm. If you watch a lot of sexual stuff, you're going to have these desires going through. That's why, if you notice, when they, uh, when they arrest people for uh, 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 what you call it, pornograph and all that, oh, yeah. they find a whole lot of stuff on their computer. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they're sitting there and, and, and they're watching that. Yeah. And, and, and that's one of the places where you really have to guard yourself. Don't be going to all of them sites and stuff. You know, you don't need to know all that kind of stuff. Just let it go. But the enemy of every now and then you get flashes on the computer about stuff. Delete that stuff. Get, you know, get rid of it. Don't meditate on it. Because if it get in your thought life, then it's going to get in your real life. Mm -hmm. You're going to start acting on it. Yes. And you know what? I love that movie because of, what is his name? Uh, Kirk Cameron. He, the actress that played his wife, he wouldn't even kiss her. He, when, 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 at the end, when he kissed a woman, that was his real wife. Uh -huh. They brought her in, and he, he kissed her. He wouldn't kiss the actress. Amen. I like that. Yeah. I like that. That was a, that was that that was integrity. That's so yeah. You know, they had to bring his real wife in for 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 him to kiss. Her. He wouldn't kiss another woman. And see, that's another thing. Actresses and actors who are Christians have to be mindful of the type of movie they do. Amen. You understand? Because they because they can be put in awkward positions. Yep. You have to be mindful of the people you hang with. Because you can uh, evil communication corrupts good manners. Mm -hmm. So we have to listen. We have to guard our character. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? You got to guard your character. Your mm -hmm. character is your witness. Yes, sir. And if you get your character defiled, you're defiling your witness. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. So the first one is leaders ought to be blameless. The second one is leaders ought to have only one spouse. All right. How much time I got? Here? Uh, four minutes. Okay, I can go through this. Yeah, I can go through this. The third one that we're gonna look at: leaders ought to teach their children to be faithful. All right. Paul said having faithful children. That's in verse 6. This refers to our children having faith in Christ and reflecting it in their conduct. All right. Paul continued the verse or the sentence of having faithful children not accused of dissipation 
and insubordination. The word dissipation is defined as waste, all right? However, it is used in the sense here of implying being loose in morals. That's what it means here. Uh, subordination refers to being unruly. Listen at this verse from the Amplified. Uh, verse 6 in the Amplified, Titus uh, 1 and 6 in the Amplified Bible reads, These elders should be men who are of unquestionable integrity and are irreproachable, the husband of but one wife, whose children are well trained and are believers not open to accusation of being loose in morals. Well, now, here it says loose in morals, and the King James it says dissipation. Not being loose in morals and conduct are unruly and disorderly. Our children ought to be well trained and not open to the accusation of being loose in morals. Now, this refers to children that are at home and not full grown. Because once a child reaches adulthood, they're on their own. You're not held accountable for that. And even bringing them up correctly, they still can go off. But uh, I think it's Proverbs, I forgot the verse, 23 and 6, train up a child, 22 and 6, train up a child in the way that they should go, and they and when they get old, they won't depart or they'll come back to it. See, we have to instill these things in them. And, and basically what Paul is saying is that if you're going to be a leader, you have to start at home. You don't, you don't let your children rule you. You, you exercise authority over them. In, our, in today's society, more parents are trying to be more friends toward their children than they are parents. Okay? And, and, and we have to be mindful of that. Uh, I, was, I was talking with a relative who was telling me about this lady who she, 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 she parties with her children. She do everything with her children. But see, her mom parted with her. They drank and, and, and smoked together. And now she jumped on her mom, and now her children have jumped on her. Trying to be friendly with her. You have to be a parent. And a parent sets the example. You don't say, don't do it, because I say not do it. You say, don't do it, because I don't do it. You set the example. That's what he's talking about. If you're going if, if, if to be a leader in the church, then you need to be a leader at home. And, and your children need to be in church when it's time for church. They don't tell you, well, I don't want to go today. Oh, you going. <laughs> now, whether you conscious or unconscious, but you going. <laughs> no. Don't knock them out. Now. Okay. <laughs> but, we, and, 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 but in today's society, that's how children say, well, I don't want to go today. Okay, you don't have to. You stay home. <laughs> you know, in the Muslim religion, they don't play that. They are very, they children do what they say. You understand? They train them up. That's why at, at, at young ages, the, the, those that are Muslim, they're, 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 they're a radical. The children are radical because they're brought up like that. See, we, we have to get to a place where we trust the Bible concerning raising our children. Yes. Do you know why I believe this is, this is, this is uh, the gospel according to James? <laughs> I believe that the, the reason why uh, the government tighten up on, on parents spanking their children because they got to the place where they was hitting them with anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're abusing them. God gave us some padding, mm -hmm. and that's where you're to spank your children. Mm -hmm. But see, right. parents get upset. They, I remember my used to tell me to go get a switch. And I made the mistake of bringing a little old switch back. <laughs> yeah. That was a big mistake. But when he, because when he got the switch, <laughs> in my day, the beaters that we got would have been called child abuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but they set us on the right track. Yes, they did. They came right out of me. That's right. 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 And see, I believe that 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 law came in because parents got to the place where they were getting the children in the yeah. face with their fists. So that's a beauty. Yeah. You need to be in jail if you're doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you got a padding. Mm -hmm. I I'm one that believes you need to get not 
not even a belt, but, but, but get a board like to do in school and, and, and pad them like this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We need to do it according to the Bible. Yeah. Amen. The reason why I say that is because God is the one that set the rule. Okay? Amen. So God knows how to raise children yeah. better than we do. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And I know parents today, a lot of parents today don't believe in spanking. And and what I'm finding out, those that don't believe in spanking, when the children get older, the children are spanking them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Cussing them out, telling yeah. them off. Right. You know what I mean? But we have to discipline our children. Right. And as leaders, Paul says that one of the requirements is that we make sure that our children are taught about God. And y'all okay with that? Yes, sir. Father, we give you praise. I, I'm going to put this over, so. Yeah. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for revealing to us through your word how we are to conduct ourselves as leaders, yes. how we are to con uh, raise our children and, and love our spouse and, and love everybody. We just thank you for that. We thank you that you've empowered us through the Holy Spirit and you've informed us through your word. And we just give you praise. Thank you for Jesus and thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. But most of all, we thank you for your love because every thing that we have is a product of your love. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and everyone in agreement says.